Hello everyone and welcome to the digital seminar series on advances exploring development in the chemical sciences organized by the Royal Society of Chemistry London early career network local section Manchester and district I am privileged to be part of this exciting digital seminar series and I thank everyone especially Max Aubrey and Sheena Worthington for giving me this opportunity to speak on a topic of current interest that is green analytical chemistry assessment of method greenness i am pranav shivastav from department of chemistry gujarat university ahmedabad india ahmedabad as we know is a heritage city and is situated on the banks of the holy river sabarmati it is also known as the manchester of india due to its similarity with the famous cotton textile center of manchester uk a brief about my background i did my bachelor's and masters of science from gujarat university then went on to complete my master of philosophy and phd in chemistry from the same university currently i am a professor of analytical chemistry at gujarat university and i am engaged in teaching and research my research interests include development of novel analytical and bioanalytical methods for determination of chiral and achiral drugs and their metabolites in different biological matrices using well known techniques like lcms UPLC MS supercritical flow, fluid chromatography I am also interested in the studies related to the mechanism of retention on different chromatography phases using some computational tools and also evaluating different sample preparation techniques matrix effect and stability issues Recently I have also started working on nanomaterials and biosensors Before we go on to green analytical chemistry a brief overview on analytical chemistry which deals with material characterization it helps to provide qualitative and quantitative information about a material or sample in any form analytical chemistry plays an enormous role in our society such as in drug manufacturing process control medical diagnostics food production forensic surveys and many others it is a science that is directed towards creating new knowledge so that chemical analysis can be improved to respond to increasing or new demands the last couple of de decades have been very eventful especially in the area of analytical instrumentation in terms of the technological changes increased application of nanotechnology automation and artificial intelligence has led led to a new generation of smart technologies that are much compact faster and accurate the major focus has been on miniaturization as instruments consume considerable amount of energy and also on automation and hyphenation in hyphenation two analytical techniques or even more with complementary information such as chromatographs and spectrometers are combined to solve many complex analytical problems all of this contributes towards the principles of green approach in chemistry or analytical chemistry The whole idea of green chemistry has its roots in sustainable development. The initial attempts for sustainability were directed towards industrial scale processes and products as proposed in the principles of green chemistry by the pioneers Anastas and Warner. Green analytical chemistry has emerged from green chemistry in the year 2000. It emphasizes on the role of analytical chemists to make laboratory practices more environmentally friendly apart from the development in instrumentation and analytical methodologies which are essential for the improvement in the quality quality of chemical analysis efforts are being made to reduce the negative impact of chemical analysis on the environment and to enable implementation of sustainable development principles to analytical laboratories all said and done there has to be a good balance between increasing the quality of results and the performance and at the same time improving environmental friendliness of analytical methods the key components of green chemistry which forms the backbone of green analytical chemistry includes elimination or reduction of the use of chemical substances use of environmental friendly sample preparation techniques such as ultrasound micro assisted extraction supercritical fluid extraction superheated water extraction use of special membranes cloud point extraction and many others also 
proper management of analytical waste, minimum use of energy and prime consideration is given to the safety of the operator. Currently, there are several approaches to green analytical chemistry metrics that have been developed. Each of them have their own advantages and limitations and are based on the canons of green chemistry principles. National Environmental Methods Index, NAMI, is a metric system based on a simple pictogram that is divided into four parts. Each of them reflects a different criteria, such as generation of waste, reagents that are persistent, bioaccumulative, toxic, reagents that are hazardous and corrosive and so on and so forth. Analytical equal scale is a novel comprehensive approach which is based on assigning penalty points to parameters of an analytical process that are not in agreement with the ideal green analysis. Multi-criteria decision analysis, MCDA, is mainly used in environmental science and environmental management. Basically, basically it deals with social, environmental, economical, and technological criteria during the decision making. In GAPI, that is Green Analytical Procedures Index, a specific symbol with five pentagons can be used to evaluate and quantify the environmental impact involved in each step of any analytical methodology mainly using three colors that is green, yellow and red, depicting low, medium and high impact. In the RGB additive color model, there are three primary colors which are used to represent the different attributes of the method. Red signifies analytical performance, green relates to safety and eco-friendliness, blue refers to productivity. Of course, the final color of the method is the additive synthesis of the primary colors. However, my focus would be on the sixth one, the sixth metric that is AGREE, Analytical Greenness Metric Tool, as it evaluates or considers all 12 principles of green analytical chemistry, which is not the case with other approaches. This metric system has been characterized through or takes into account comprehensiveness of input, flexibility of input, simplicity of input, and clarity of output, which includes material requirement, number of procedural steps, energy requirement, generation of waste, safety of the analyst, miniaturization, and automation of equipments. In this metric tool, the input criteria refers to 12 significance principles, which is a mnemonic and can be assigned different weights that allow for a certain degree of flexibility. And each of these 12 input variables is transformed into a common scale in the range of 0 to 1. The final assessment result is the product of assessment results for each principle. The performance of the procedure in each principle is reflected with the intuitive red, yellow, green color scale, while the weight or the weightage of each principle is reflected with the width of its corresponding segment as can be seen in the figure. This assessment can be easily performed using a simple user-friendly software. It generates a simple pictogram and an assessment report. This table shows a comparison of 12 principles of green chemistry with the corresponding principle in green analytical chemistry to the mnemonic significance. Select, integrate, generate, never, integrate, favor, increase, carry, avoid, note, choose, and eliminate. Under the first principle, direct analytical technique should be added, uh, applied to avoid sample treatment. Although it is not always possible as the sample should be in a proper state of matter, as there are different greenness levels that are associated uh, with uh, different sample treatment approaches. For example, for remote sensing without sample damage is assigned a score of one. The goal of the second principle is to have a minimal sample size and a minimum number of samples. The number of samples can be reduced by using statistics for the selection of sampling sites 
or use of non-invasive methods for field screening. For sample size, the type of analysis that is ultra micro analysis, micro analysis, semi micro analysis up to 100 milligram is assigned a score of one. And for sample size, other than that, for macro analysis, we can use the equation as shown here. The third principle. This principle aims at the determination of target analytes as directly as, as possible. The importance is to locate the device close to the measurement location as the time between the two analysis can be shortened and the time delay between sample collection can also be minimized. The major benefits of in situ measurement includes performing chemical analysis with little or no sample pretreatment, increased safety for the analyst or the operator and minimum use of reagents. A score of one is assigned to inline analysis. This principle relates to integration of analytical processes and operations to save energy and reduce the use of reagents. Decreasing the number of analytical steps as much as possible will lead to savings in material costs, energy and time. The fifth principle, which is based on automated and miniaturized methodology, both Automation and miniaturization of analytical methods bring benefits such as less reagents, solvents and energy. Automation of analytical procedures result in lower occupational exposure, especially towards vapors of solvents, and it also minimizes the risk of accidents. In the sixth principle, derivatization should be avoided. In analytical chemistry, Derivatization is commonly used as micro reactions to improve the extractability, analytical separation, or in detection of target analytes. The assessment criteria refers to the safety of application, environmental fate, environmental persistence, and biological effects. This is mainly because the level of hazard depends upon the nature of derivatization used. The figure shows that derivatization agents within GCLC and Carroll derivatizing agents with a score between 0 and 1. One is assigned to the greenest, greenest alternative. Likewise, if no derivatization is applied, then the score is equal to 1. Principle 7 pertains to analytical waste generated. Large volume of waste should be avoided and there should be proper management of analytical waste. The analytical waste here refers to liquid or solid reagents added to the sample, solvents, acids or bases which are used, consumables and single use devices such as sorbents, cartridges, pasture pipettes, filters, etc. Similarly, when online decontamination, reuse or recycling of waste is performed, the amount of waste generated per sample is corrected accordingly. In this principle, multi analyte or multiple parameter methods are preferred over methods using one analyte at a time. Essentially, the score is based on the number of consecutive analytes analyzed in one hour. Greater the analyte throughput, greater is the score. The ninth principle emphasizes on minimum use of energy for any analysis. The scores are assigned based on energy consumption per analysis for sample preparation, analytical separation systems and detection systems and is expressed in kilowatt hours per sample. A score of one is assigned to, uh, to energy consumption less than 0 0.1 kilowatt hours per sample. In the 10th principle, the use of chemicals derived from renewable sources is a promising and uh, desirable approach, not only in uh, analytical chemistry, but also in all branches of uh, chemistry. The scores are based on straightforward approach. If all reagents used are bio-based or no reagents are used, then a score of one is given and zero when none of the reagents is from renewable resources. 
The 11th GAC principle aims at removal or replacement of toxic reagents by greener alternatives wherever possible. Additionally, the amount of toxic reagents or solvents used is also considered during evaluation. For procedures that consume no toxic reagents, the score is 1, while for others, the mass or volume of the reagent is transformed into the score using this given equation. The last principle, the 12th one, it includes the safety of the operator or analyst and environmental hazards. The number of threats that are not avoided is, con is considered in this case. This includes toxic to aquatic life, bioaccumulative, persistent, highly flammable, highly oxidizable, explosive, corrosive. The score is given based on the number of threats. For zero threat, a score of one is assigned. Now in the last part of my work, I'll share some of the work that was done in our lab to develop some novel SFC-based methods, supercritical fluid chromatography-based methods. And we also evaluated the method greenness using the agri metric tool. In this work, we tried to develop a method to separate four anti-diabetic drugs using SFC on an amylose-based chiral stationary phase using carbon dioxide and methanol isopropanol mixture as co-solvents. It was possible to resolve all four drugs with good efficiency. To su support the experimental results, a molecular docking study was also performed using Schrodinger software to have a deeper insight into the type of interactions between the analytes and the chiral stationary phase, and also to understand the, their elution orders. All the intra uh, interactions were essentially enthalpy driven. The interactions were mainly hydrogen bonding, pi basic, pi acidic interactions, and dipole dipole interactions between the carbonyl group NH and the phenyl carbamate moiety of the stationary phase with the primary and secondary amino groups of metformin and aromatic ring systems and hydroxy groups in the glyphosates. The molecular docking scores results correlated well with the elution order based on the docking score and hydrogen bond energy. The method greenness score was 0 0.84 using agri matrix. In another method, four steroisomers of luliconazole, an antifungal drug, drug was, uh, were separated on an amylose based chiral pack IH column. Uh, the Venthoff plots revealed the chiral separation was essentially entropy driven. The results from molecular docking study revealed hydrogen bonding and pi pi interactions as the dominant interaction modes. The elution orders and the binding energies of the interactions were in good agreement with the experimental results. And of course, the me method greenness score was 0 0.88. Just like the previous work, here three beta blockers, namely etanol, metoprolol and propanol enantiomers were well separated on chiral pec IG column. Here, metoprolol and propanol enantiomers were enthalpy driven, while etanol enantiomers were entropy driven, as evident from the figure of the separation factor versus temperature. Again, the binding energies were in, in correlation with the elution order, and the greenness score was 0.87. In another method, we were able to separate 15 co-formulated binary anti drugs using a single elution protocol, which consisted of uh, a linear gradient of carbon dioxide and 0.1% formic acid in methanol. Here, binary combinations with amylodipine and hydrochlorothiazide were separated within five minutes, and the greenness score was 0.89 using agri matrix. So these were the things, uh, work which we did using um, SFC and then applying method greenness using the agri matrix. At the end, I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to my collaborators, Vida Clinical Research, Clintha Research, Piramal Pharma Solutions for their unconditional support, and to all my team members, the dedicated team members. Thank you one and all.
थैंक यू सो मच